as nowadays everyone is talking about the respiratory tract infections in this covid-19 pandemic today we are going to see the entry point of this respiratory tract the detailed anatomy of the nasal cavity and the nasal septum the objectives of today's lecture we have to see the sub divisions of the nasal cavity its boundaries details of the nasal septum details of the lateral wall of the nose and the applied aspect of it now when you see the nose it is the uppermost part of the respiratory tract and it contains the peripheral organ of the smell also it consists of the external nose and the nasal cavity this is the external nose and inside it there lies a cavity now in greek the word rhinos is for the nose and the study of the nose and its diseases this is known as a rhinology the external nose it is a pyramidal projection in the mid face and it presents the tip root of the nose dorsum of it and ala of the nose and these are the nostrils the tip is the lower free end of it the brood or the bridge it is the upper narrow part which is continuous with that of the forehead the torso it is the round border which is present between that of the tip and the root and the nostrils these are the piriform apertures at the broad and lower end ala of it the lower flared part on the side of the nose these are known as the ala when you see the skin it is loosely attached to that of the underlying structures and hence it is freely mobile and it is also thin while over the apex and the ala it is thicker and it is more adherent as well as large sebaceous glands are also present here now hypertrophy of this sebaceous glands that is giving rise to a lobulated tumor that is known as rhinophyma now when you see the skeleton of the external nose it is partly bony and a cartilaginous so you can see in this figure this is the bony part of it and this is the cartilaginous part of it now external nose in its upper one third part it is bony and in its lower two third it is cartilaginous the bony part here you can see the two nasal bones and the frontal process of the maxilla the two nasal bones they meet in the middle line and they restore the upper part of the nasal process of the frontal bone Now they are present in between that of the frontal process of the maxilla. Now moving on to the cartilaginous part of it, there are five main cartilages are present: one septal cartilage, upper two lateral cartilages, and lower major cartilages are there. the lateral and the major alar and you can see these are the two lateral cartilages this is the septal cartilage and the two major alar cartilages are there the lateral and the major alar these are also known as superior and the inferior lateral cartilages now this cartilaginous framework it is anchored to the piriform aperture by the fibrous tissue the lateral cartilages which are present one on each side they articulate above with 
with the margin of the spiriform aperture which is formed by the frontal process of the maxilla and that of the nasal cone and below with that of the major alar cartilage now medially it is continuous by a narrow bridge with that of the septal cartilage you can see here medially it is continuous with that of the septal cartilage now the two major alar cartilage these are the two major alar cartilages these are somewhat u shaped and they comprises of the medial and the lateral crust so this will be the medial crust of the major alar cartilage and this will be the lateral crust of the major alar cartilage the medial crura of the two sides they meet in the midline now here you can see the medial crust of the two sides they meet in the midline below that of the lower margin of the septal cartilage to form the lower part of the nasal septum so this will be the medial crust of the major cartilages they meet with that of the lower border of the septal cartilage and form the columella the antero superior border of a the septal cartilage so this will be the antero superior border of it which runs from the under surface of the nasal bone so that this is running from the under surface of that of the nasal bone to that of the tip of the nose and this supports the dorsum of the cartilaginous part of the nose the lateral crust of the major cartilage it extends into the ala of the nose but it does not reach the bony margin now this gap in between that that is filled by a fibrofatty tissue now in addition to this five main cartilages there are few accessory nasal cartilages are also present and they are known as a sesamoid cartilages now as this is a projecting part of the face nasal fractures are most commonly seen in case of the trauma the medial and the lateral crura medial and the lateral crura of the major cartilages they maintain the patency of the nostril so patency of this nostril it is preserved by that of the medial and the lateral crura of the major alar cartilage and the angle between the medial and the lateral medial and the lateral crura is variable it is acute in in high and narrow noses while it is obtuse in case of the broad noses and this fact is of great significance in the plastic surgery of the nose again you can see in this figure this is these are the nasal bone frontal process of the maxilla then this is a midline septal cartilage these are the two lateral nasal cartilages and these are the major alar cartilages now here you can see in between the major cartilages you can see the tiny small sesamoid cartilages are also seen and this is the alar fibrofatty tissue present now here also you can see the septal cartilage the medial and the lateral crust of the major alar cartilage when the interior of the nose is seen it is divided by midline nasal septum into the right and the left nasal cavities now each cavity is communicating with that of the exterior through the nostril 
and with that of the nasopharynx through a posterior nasal aperture. It is also known as coena. Now each cavity, now it is divided into a small antero-inferior part which is lined by a skin that is known as vestibule and a large posterior superior part which is lined by that of the mucosa and that is known as a nasal cavity drop. Now when you see the vestibule of the nose, it is the antero inferior part of the nasal cavity lined by that of the skin. The skin here, it is abundance of the sebaceous gland, the hair follicles and the stiff interlacing hairs known as vibrissae, these are present here. Its upper limit on the lateral nasal cavity is marked by the limen nasi that will be seen later and its medial wall is formed by a mobile columella. Now when you see nasal cavity proper, it is having the roof, floor, its medial wall that is nothing but the nasal septum and its lateral wall is there. Now here you can see the roof of the nasal cavity. It is very narrow in front and it is wide at about 1 cm near that of the coil. It is horizontal in middle third where it is formed by that of the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone. Now through this the olfactory nerves they enter into the cranial cavity from that of the nasal cavity. Now the anterior third of the roof you can see here it is sloping downwards and forwards and this is formed by the nasal spine of the frontal bone then the junction of the septal and the lateral cartilages here you can see and the posterior one third part of the roof it is also sloping downwards and backwards and this is formed by the anterior surface of body of the spinoid bone. Now the floor of it, it is almost horizontal and it is formed by upper surface of the heart palate. In its anterior three fourth part, it is formed by the palatine process of the maxilla while posterior it's having the horizontal plate of the palatine bone. Now the medial wall that is nothing but the nasal septum. It is medial osseocartilaginous partition. Now it is osseocartilaginous as it is having the cartilage plus the bone. This is a partition between that of the two nasal cavities. It is thought that it is in the central midline but it bulges onto one side either right or the left mostly. Now the bony part of it, it is formed by the perpendicular plate of the ether, this is perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone which forms the posterior superior part of the septum and this is the vomer which forms the posterior inferior part of it. In addition to it, there lies other bones are also contributing. These are the nasal spine of the frontal bone. Then the crest of that of the nasal bones, the spinoidal crest and the nasal crest which is formed by that of the palatine process of the maxilla and here you can also see the palatine process of the maxilla and that of the 
nasal crest of that of the palatine bone and so contributing to that of the nasal septum the cartilaginous part of it is formed by that of the septal cartilage which forms the major anterior part of the septum and it fits in the angle between that of the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid and that of the vomer and the septal processes of the two major alar cartilages now in between we are seeing between that of the the two major alar cartilage they meet in the midline and they forms a area that is known as a columella now here there lies a columellar and a membranous septum which is freely movable from side to side now the entity known as deviated nasal septum that is nothing but the dns is most commonly seen and here it is important cause of that of the nasal obstruction it is most commonly seen in case of the males while it might be occur because of the trauma or the developmental errors if the deviated nasal septum is severe and it is causing the mechanical obstruction that will lead to the breathing difficulty and that of the sinusitis as well as the excessive snoring is seen and this is corrected by that of the submucous resection or it is also known as a septoplastic moving on to the blood supply of the nasal septum it is divided into four quadrants the anterior superior part of the nasal septum it is supplied by the anterior ethmoidal artery and the posterior posterior superior part it is supplied by the posterior ethmoidal artery these are the branches of the ophthalmic artery the anterior inferior part it is supplied by the superior labial artery which is branch of the facial artery then a branch from the spinopalatine artery which is again the branch of the maxillary artery then the greater palatine artery here you can see it the greater palatine artery then a anastomosis or is formed by these arteries this is known as a little's area or a kesselbach plexus which is a common site of bleeding from nose that is known as a epistaxis by the posterior inferior part it is supplied by that of the greater palatine artery now this kessel box plexus or it is also known as little's area it can be asked as a mcq that which arteries are related with that of the little's area and what is the exception of it moving on to the nerve supply of the nasal septum it is supplied by that of the olfactory nerves they supply the upper part just below that of the cribriform plate the internal nasal branch which supplies the anterior superior quadrant of the nasal septum then the nasopalatine branches which are arising from that of the pterygopalatine ganglion they supply the posterior inferior part of it the medial posterior superior nasal branches again coming from that of the pterygopalatine ganglion they supply the posterior superior part of it and the other branches these are the nasal branches of the greater palatine they supply the posterior most part 
as well as the anterior superior alveolar nerves they supplies the anterior inferior part of the nasal septum here again you can see the olfactory nerves from above just above that of the cribriform plate then the internal nasal branches of that of the anterior ethmoidal nerves which supply the anterior superior quadrant of the nasal septum then the nasal palatine nerves which supplies the posterior superior part of the nasal septum then which are arising from that of the pterygo palatine ganglion nasal branches of that of the greater palatine they supply the posterior part and the anterior superior alveolar branches branches of that of the maxillary they supply the anterior inferior part of the nasal septum moving on to the lateral wall of the nose it is formed by a number of bones and the cartilages now here you can see it is formed by that of the nasal then the frontal process of the maxilla the lacrimal lobe bone then the superior and the middle concave of that of the ethmoid then the inferior concave that will be a separate bone perpendicular plate of that of the palatine bone then and posteriorly this bone forming the medial plate of that of the pterygoid plate the cartilages involved in that of the lateral wall they are the lateral nasal cartilages and the major alar cartilages and three or four tiny cartilages of the ana these are also involved in it now when you see the features of the lateral wall of the nasal cavity anterior part of it is present a small depressed area that is known as the vestibule now this is lined by that of the skin and it contains a small tuft here hairs these are known as a vibrissae middle part of it this is known as atrium of the middle meatus and it is limited above by a faint ridge of the mucous membrane that is known as agar nasi now the curved mucocutaneous junction between that of the atrium this is atrium and this is the vestibule a curved portion junction between the two atrium and that of the vestibule this is known as a limen nasi the posterior part of this lateral wall of the nose it presents the three scroll like projections these are known as the conchi or a tubules and the space beneath that of the concha this is known as a meatus the conchi and the meatus these are the main features of this lateral these are the conchi superior concha middle concha and the inferior concha and space beneath it that is known as meatus this is the superior meatus middle meatus and this is the inferior meatus when you lift that of the form the conchi and the meatus they form the features of this lateral wall of the nasal cavity the conchi these are the curved bony projections which are directed downwards and that of the median and below it there are some openings are present that will be seen in the next slide the superior and the in uh, the middle concha these are the projections from that of the ethmoidal labyrinth while the inferior concha it is an independent bone the superior one this is the smallest and the inferior is the largest of that of the concha as the concha are removed in this picture this is the space beneath that of the superior concha this is superior meatus this is middle meatus and this is the inferior meatus so fit now the inferior meatus it is the largest one and it is lying just beneath that of the inferior concha which is removed here 
This is middle meatus, which lies underneath that of the middle concha. And here you can see the different features. A bulging is seen. This is known as a gula ethmoidalis, which is formed by that of the middle ethmoidal sinuses. One semilunar sulcus is seen here. This is known as the hiatus semilunaris. So this sulcus, this is hiatus semilunaris and a bony a bulging is seen just above that hiatus semilunaris. This is known as bulla ethmoidalis. This is superior meatus which is lying just beneath that of the superior concha. The different openings present in this lateral wall of the nasal cavity. The superior meatus it receives the openings of the posterior ethmoidal sinuses. Now ethmoidal bulla which is the rounded elevation which is formed by that of the middle ethmoidal air sinuses while the hiatus semilunaris in its anterior part it receives the opening of the frontal air sinus. Now in its middle part it receives the opening of that of the anterior ethmoidal air sinus while in its posterior part it receives the opening of the maxillary air sinus. Now the superior meatus, just to revise, superior meatus, it receives the openings of the posterior ethmoidal sinuses. Then hiatus semilunaris, anteriorly, it receives the opening of frontal sinus. In its middle part, it receives the opening of anterior ethmoidal cells. While in its posterior part, it receives the opening of maxillary sinus. While the bulla ethmoidalis, it is formed by that of the openings of the middle ethmoidal air sinuses. Now the inferior meatus, here lies the opening of the nasolacrimal duct, which can be asked as a MCQ. Where the nasolacrimal duct opens, it is opening into the inferior meatus. And there is also a spinoethmoidal recess is there which is present just above that of the superior concha and here the spinoid the air sinus it opens into this recess. The antero superior moving on to the nerve supply of this lateral neck wall, the antero superior quadrant of it, it is supplied by the anterior ethmoidal nerves, which are branches of that of the ophthalmic nerve. Posterior superior part, it receives nerve supply from that of the posterior superior lateral nasal branches, while the anterior inferior part, it receives the nerve supply from that of the anterior superior alveolar nerve, which are branches of that of the maxillary nerve. And the posterior inferior part of it, it receives the anterior palatine branches from the pterygopalatine ganglion. Uppermost part receives the olfactory nerves. Blood supply to the lateral wall. The anterior superior part, it receives the anterior ethmoidal artery, branch of that of the ophthalmic. The posterior superior part, is supplied by that of the spinopalatine artery branches. The anterior inferior part, it receives the branches from that of the facial artery, while the posterior inferior part, it receives branches from that of the greater palatine artery. So this is for the blood supply of the lateral wall of the nose. Anterior superior part, anterior ethmoidal, Antero posterior superior by spinopalatine artery, anterior inferior by that of the facial arteries, and the posterior inferior by that of the greater palatine arteries. The veins drainage, the veins draining the nasal cavity, they form a plexus beneath that of the mucosa, and 
they generally accompany that of the arteries. Now the veins of the nasal cavity they drain into the facial vein, the pterygoid venous plexus, and in that of the pharyngeal venous plexus. The point to note here is the submucous venous plexus, which is more marked in this the region of the lateral area. Here, the retrocolumnar veins they run vertically downwards and they cross that of the nasal floor of the nasal cavity. So, it is also a common site for the venous bleeding in case of the young individuals. The lymphatic drainage of the nasal cavity. The anterior half of it, it drains into the submandibular lymph nodes while the posterior half of the nasal cavity, it drains into the retropharyngeal lymph nodes. Moving on to the applied anatomy of the nasal cavity. Examination of the nasal cavity, it is known as a rhinoscopy where the nasal cavity it can be examined in the living individual by through that of the nostril or through that of the pharynx. When it is seen through the nostril that is known as anterior rhinoscopy and through the pharynx that is known as a posterior rhinoscopy. The anterior rhinoscopy this is a picture showing that of the anterior where you can see it is carried out by inserting a nasal speculum through the nostril and here you can see the medial and the middle and the inferior conchi, the superior middle and the inferior meatuses can be seen and that of the nasal septum is seen as well the floor of the nasal cavity is seen. Why? In case of the posterior rhinoscopy, it is carried out by inserting a mirror into the pharynx and the structures seen are the poena, the conchi and the posterior border of that of the nasal septum. Now deviated nasal septum, it is most commonly seen. Most commonly it is in case of the males and the factors causing it might be trauma or a developmental errors. Perforation of the nasal septum that is known as a septal button. Then there is also an entity known as nasal polyps where it is a painless benign growth of the lining of the nodes or the sinuses and the different causes of it like the chronic inflammation, infections or allergies. They can lead to the nasal polyps. Then there are the different acute chronic and the allergic rhinitis which is nothing but the inflammation of the mucosa. In case of the acute, it is of the duration is in days to the four weeks. While chronic, it is of the long term duration. And allergic, it is because of some drugs or environmental pollutants can cause allergic rhinitis. The atropic rhinitis here. The tissue that lines the nose, that is the mucosa, it gets rampant and that will lead to the shrinking down effect that is known as the atrophic rhinitis. Causes of it, there might be autoimmune diseases or the chronic sinusitis or a poor nutritional status, hereditary, it might be the cause of the atrophic rhinitis. Then, epistaxis, we are seeing the little sedia where the nasal bleeding can be seen in case of the children at the time of picking of the nose. Then CSA rhinomia. Here, if there is trauma, then whatever that protective fluid of the brain, it comes out through the nose and that of the sinuses. And it is implemented, appeared as a watery, runny nose. In most of the cases, it occurs because of the major accidents where the bones of the face and the skull they are having the fractures.
just to summarize we had seen the details of the nasal cavity the external nose its roof floor natural wall of it and the nasal septum that is the median wall of the nasal cavity then the nerve supply the blood supply of it and the applied aspect of the nasal cavity Thank you.